Have you ever had problems with miters that don't look perfect? I have, and it's really annoying. In this video I'm going to show you the one easy fix to get perfect miters every time. It's not hard at all, it doesn't require any fancy expensive tools and no, I'm not talking about the screwdriver fix that, honestly, I don't like that much anyways. And as a bonus I will have some cool 3D prints for the project I'm currently making as well. You might have seen people suggest the screwdriver fix before, but if you haven't it's basically a way to cover up miters that don't look good, like makeup for wood. It's done by getting a screwdriver and once your miter is glued up and looking funky you grind the steel of the screwdriver against the miter and that kind of rubs off the end and turns it into a round over kind of covering up the mistake. The reason I don't like this is that it's a way of covering up a mistake in cutting the miter. I want to go back in time and mitigate that mistake before it's even made. And the easy fix I'm talking about is what helped me and can help you as well. So I've been doing miters many times and a lot of the time I have to retreat to the screwdriver fix and also adding a lot of wood filler to cover up the gap in the miter. What's your most memorable miter mistake? Let me know in the comments down below and let's see who has the wildest story. And that's also the reason I decided I never want to do that again. If you've put a lot of effort into making something, you don't want the miters to look half good. You want them to look perfect. So what I did was I chickened out. I stopped doing the miters because I couldn't seem to get them perfect. I did all kinds of butt joints and rabbit joints I could find, but that was the wrong way of attacking the issue. But now I'm determined for this project, and I know exactly what I need to do. By the way, if you can guess during the build what I'm making, let me know. So to start this perfect miter experience up we need to do something before we can do the one simple fix that will get you perfect miters every time. It doesn't really matter which tool you use for this, it could be a plunge saw with a track, a table saw or a miter saw. But for the sake of this video I'm going to use the table saw. And this first step to set up the table saw is important to do whether you're cutting miters or not. And if we don't do this step we might end up with cupped or slightly angled miters and we don't want that. In order to do this step you need a gauge or a speed square. And before you think this will be expensive it doesn't need to be at all. This dial gauge I have is from Banggood and it was 27 bucks. There's an even cheaper alternative route to go though. This one is 3D printed. I just got the dial itself from Amazon and then I 3D printed a small holder for it. It might not be cheaper than the Banggood alternative but rather faster if you own a 3D printer that is. I'll have the one I 3D printed linked down below. Now what are we going to use this for? Well we want to establish that our blade is running parallel to the track of our table saw. And this gauge is what we use to make sure of that. If you don't have a gauge you can use your speed square as well. So what you do is you line up the dial pointer with the blade like this. I like to make a mark where the dial is, then reset the dial to zero. Then you rotate the blade and move the gauge in place of the dot I previously drew. And by reading the dial you can see how much it moves across the width of the blade. If it's within 10 thousandths of an inch you can be pleased, but if you get even closer to zero that's of course even better. Mine is as close to zero as I can get so I'm happy, but if you aren't there's usually a section in the manual on how to go about adjusting this on your particular table saw. I have four bolts that I unlock to make the adjustment. Okay, so we have established that our blade is straight on the table saw. For the track saw you don't really need to since you're using the track and there's no real way of adjusting the blade. The same goes for the miter saw. And if you're doing this on a band saw I wish you good luck. And if you succeed, I'm impressed. Now before we do the last fix, and by the way the fix I'm suggesting might sound a bit strange to you but you will have to trust me on this. Before we go there we need to get our appropriate tools out. I'm going to use a miter gauge that I know is perfectly aligned with the blade. You could also use a crosscut sled of course, whatever floats your boat. Or if you're using the track saw or the miter saw, hang tight. If you're using a miter gauge as me though it's very important to make sure that it's dead 90 to the blade. So use whatever measuring device you have to make sure you're as straight to the blade as you can possibly be. If you're using a crosscut sled, the same rule applies. Make sure your sled is perfect. 
This miter gauge is from Hongdui and I have it perfectly aligned to the blade. Okay, let's stop hovering over this thing like hot porridge and get to it. The next and final step is to set the angle of the blade, whether it be the table saw, miter saw or the track saw. And this is where we get to the final fix that will get you perfectly looking miters. For my table saw I have this angle cube that is magnetic, so it attaches to the table like this. I'll put it on the cast iron top on the table saw, then I'll push the button for it to reset to zero degrees, then I can move it to the blade and start tilting the blade. And by the way, if you have a guess at what the fix is, pause the video and comment down below. When we get to 45, and this is the brilliant fix to get a really nice and sharp miter, we'll do just a tad more, like 44.9. Or if you're using something like a miter square, set up the blade so that you have a tiny tiny gap at the bottom. Why? Well, let's cut them at 44.9 first and I'll show you what happens. When gluing up a box like this, we don't really need a lot of clamp force. Blue tape usually works just fine. I went ahead and taped all the seams whilst also making sure that they were perfectly aligned. Pushing them up against the fence of the table saw usually does the trick. As an added clamp bonus I use these really inexpensive band clamps. And an important step is to make sure that every corner is perfectly square. This is of course crucial as well. If we don't have square corners we will end up with a shifted square which in turn will screw up the miters. After the glue had dried I unclamped the box and this is how the miters look. The best miters I've ever done. They look absolutely perfect. This is what happens when we go a bit further with the angle. We will get a teeny tiny gap on the inside, barely noticeable. But the outside, where we want the miter to look perfect, is looking perfect and sharp. Now I don't need to use the screwdriver to round over these corners. I can keep them as sharp as I want. I mean you could set the table saw at 45 degrees as well, but the risk is that you will end up with a tiny gap on the outside of the miter, which we don't want. And then you would have to resort to the screwdriver fix. And for some that is good enough, but if I'm doing miters I really want them to look sharp. So what I was actually making, did you already figure it out? Was this charging station for the Three of the Makers podcast challenge. Before this I had my charging cables all over the place and I thought this would be a good way of charging all my things at the same place. The station consists of a mitered box of Valchromat where the cables and the USB hub will stay. It is then covered with this laser cut pegboard that I spray painted black. Then I 3D printed some accessories to be able to attach some of the things I want to charge. Like my phone, my batteries for the camera, microphones, flashlight and a bunch of other stuff. And then I can hang it on the wall and have the things I need to charge at the same place. Let me know what you think and I'm going to promise this right away. I'll answer every comment to this video indefinitely. Can I really promise that? I promise. Uh, but please don't spam. See you in the next one. Bye.